The Smash roster is one of my favorite parts of the entire Smash Bros series, with the inclusions of new fighters every installment. Never knowing who the next fighter is going to be, some fighters don't make it in, either being deconfirmed from me costumes, assist trophies, or other fighters from a third party company taking the spot, as well as a few other reasons, welcome to a new foes appeared, where we talk about ideas for fighters that could be possibly happen in Smash 6, if not the future. I'm your host BB8 from BB8's house as always, let's get into it, up next. Hey there YouTube lovers, welcome back to a new foes appeared. It's official, a new foes appeared is back. I may have took a break from a new foes appeared to change a few things, but here we are again. Doing more new foes appeared, and I'm ready for it. But what's with the confetti? Oh wait, it's my birthday. <sighs> right, I'm 20 today, so I thought, why not give a give a nod to my birthday? And I thought since it's my birthday that I should be allowed to have the pick. But, but who is the first foe of 2024? Well, take a look at this, then you'll find out. For generations, my family has served and protected our city by following traditional paths. My grandmother devoted herself to the Fox Spirit, who taught her the ancient way of healing. Whereas my mother has chosen the path of the blade, Passing down time-honored skills through training and discipline. I knew each of them wanted me to follow her path. But I couldn't choose. Training quiets my mind and opens me to the Fox Spirit's guidance. And my bond with her lets me protect those who can't fight for themselves. They both made me feel whole. And they both felt like home. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Kitty Koo? That's right. Kitty Koo from Overwatch 2 is who we are going to talk about today. And like I did tease, on a new foes appeared 90 with the envelopes i did tease that four new foes from overwatch would come and the red envelope is kiriko the only reason i chose kiriko over sojourn is probably because i find her lore more interesting and the character was easier to get into so without further ado Let's get into it, shall we? For her attributes, the playstyle would be Kunai Wielder plus Ninja. Kiriko would embody the, the agility of a ninja, utilizing her Kunai and swift movement to control the battlefield. She excels in both offense and support, making her a versatile character. So her stats, the weight would be comparable to Marth. Kiriko has balanced weight, making her not too easy to launch while still allowing her to make agile movements. The walk speed would be comparable to Mario. 
Her swift footsteps mirror Mario's walking pace, enabling precise positioning and footsies. The initial dash would be comparable to Sheik, as Kiriko's initial dash is fast, allowing her to close the gap between her and her opponents easily. The run speed would be comparable to Greninja, as she has high run speed, enabling her to dart across the stage with ease. And the air speed would be comparable to Sheik, as Kiriko's aerial mobility is similar to Sheik, granting her exceptional maneuverability in the air. The fall speed would be comparable to Roy and Crom. Her descent speed is similar to Roy and Crom, allowing her to retain control while descending. The size would be similar to Joker, as Kiriko's stature is similar to Joker's, making her a compact target that's challenging to hit. The frame data will be compared to Fox and Sheik, as Kiriko's moves would have quick startup frames similar to characters like Fox or Sheik, allowing rapid attacks and counterplay. The damage would be comparable to Link, as she deals solid damage per hit, comparable to Link's punishing strikes. The combos would be comparable to Joker's, with the versatility of her kunai and ninja skills, Kiriko can perform combos similar to Joker's, chaining together quick and precise attacks. And the KO power would be comparable to Joker. While not as heavy hitting as some characters, Kiriko possesses KO power similar to Joker, relying on skillful placements and setups to secure KOs, and the recovery would be comparable to Greninja. As Kiriko's recovery would be reminiscent of Greninja's agility, with her swift step providing impressive vertical and horizontal recovery options. For the HUD, similar to how Inkling has Tank Gauge, Joker has Rebels Gauge, Banjo and Kazooie have the Wonder Wing Feathers, and Steve has a Block Supply, Kiriko's HUD would have two features in it. Spirit Gauge and Protection Suzu Counter. The, the Spirit Gauge meter would resemble the Ultimate meter from Overwatch. Kiriko can use her Kitsune Run ability starting at 20%. The aura around her would grow, grow stronger as the gauge reaches 100%. The Spirit Gauge fills as Kiriko deals damage to opponents or takes hits from opponents. And the Protection Suzu counter would display the number of Protection Suzus that Kiriko would currently have wielding, and she can't accumulate more Suzus until she loses a stock. This measure is put in place to make sure that Protection Suzu isn't overpowered. For the move set, the neutral special we have Kunai slash healing of Fuda. Kiriko's versatile technique allows her to utilize two options for her neutral special. By pressing the B button, she hurls a sharp Kunai at her adversaries, inflicting damage and potentially setting up for follow-up attacks. Alternatively, holding down the B button, she invokes the power of healing a Fuda, projecting a cascade of restorative talesmans. These ethereal symbols gracefully seek out 
and heal the wounds of her designated allies. The healing of Fuda adds a unique strategic element, letting Kiriko support her team even in the middle of the battle. The side special would be Kitsune Rush. Kiriko would harness the power of her Kitsune spirit with the careful balance utilizing a gauge to prevent overuse. This spirit's manifestation is tied to her spirit gauge, a unique mechanic. The fuller the gauge, the more p potential there is to the, to the attack itself. The lowest being at 20%, a subtle quick burst of energy being released, damaging nearby foes. But the fullest it can get to is 100%, is where the spirit transforms into a fearsome force, charging forward with increased speed, power, and dealing substantial damage, and even launching opponents. The recharge over time mirrors her Overwatch ultimate, maintaining strategic depth. In keeping her alternative costumes, the spirit's appearance shifts, like her default blue Kitsune or her athleisure skin, which will be different depending on the alternative costume you use. For the up special, we have Swift Step or Wall Climb. Kiriko's versatile move does offer two functionalities. As a recovery move in Free For All, Swift Step allows her to teleport to a safe location. In team battles, it goes further by enabling her to instantly teleport to a teammate, even across walls or platforms. Building upon her wall running ability from Overwatch, wall climb serves a dual purpose. When near a wall, tilting the stick upward diagonally triggers a recovery climb, aiding Kiriko's ascent. Additionally, clinging to a wall activates wall climb. By holding the jump button and tilting the stick upward without pressing B, Kiriko can elegantly run up the wall for a maximum of 4 seconds, extending her reach to higher ground as this strategic wall tra traversal enhances her vantage point, allowing the tactical positioning and surprise attacks. The down special would be Protection Suzu. Protection Suzu is a strategic addition to her Smash Brothers moveset. When activated, she tosses a protective charm, enveloping nearby allies in a brief un invulnerability aura. This not only prevents damage to them, but also cleanses them from most negative effects like poison or freeze. However, to maintain game balance and avoid making the more overly powerful compared to its Overwatch 2 counterpart, there's a stock based limitation. Much like Banjo and Kazooie's Wonder Wing, Kiriko can only use Protection Suzu a limited number of times per stock. This ensures that players can't overly rely on the move. Promoting tactical and thoughtful use of her support abilities during the battles. And finally, for the final smash, we have the Yokai Clan. Drawing upon her rich lore and origin, Kiriko summons the formidable Yokai Clan to aid her in a devastating final smash. As her enemies tremble, three members of the Yokai clan step forth, Ryota, Nobuto, and Sakura. 
each embodies a unique aspect of the yokai's tactics and spirit. Ryota, the stealth blade from the shadows, executing lightning quick slashes that engulf nearby foes in darkness. Nobuto, the tempest, unleashes a whirlwind of kunai, creating a cyclone that lifts opponents into the air and damages them with every spin. And Sakura, the enchantress, casts a mystical Afuda that heal Kiriko and her allies, while weakening adversaries caught within the divine symbols. Together, the Yokai clan embodies the essence of Kanazeka's resistance against Tyranny. As they converge in a coordinated onslaught, the foes caught within their spectral embrance experience a barrage of relentless strikes, elemental chaos, and spiritual energy. The screen becomes a canvas of dazzling combat, illustrating the yokai's determination to protect their homeland and inspire fear in those who dare to oppress. The final smash not only pays homage to Kiriko's origins and her pivotal role in the yokai clan, but also captures the essence of the guerrilla warfare tactics with a culmination of swift strikes, healing magic, and elemental power. And the yokai clan delivers a triumphant symphony of justice, leaving her enemies awestruck and defeated. For the alts and the Kirby hat, her alts would consist of two palettes, her default alt and her athleisure skin. So the first alt would be Kiriko's standard skin, would be based on her default skin from Overwatch 2, and her fox spirit would be as it is in Overwatch 2. Meaning that I will be changing the color of the fox spirit depending on the alt. Like I did say in the moveset, I'm doing it for, for the alts as well. The athleisure alt would be in red with the fox recolored to match the red theme. A G-Sai alt would resemble the blue A G-Sai skin from Overwatch 2 and would reflect another shade of blue, meaning it won't be the same shade of blue as her Kitsune in the game, but a different shade of blue. The green athleisure suit would be a green recolor of the athleisure skin from Overwatch 2, altered to complement the green tones with the fox spirit change to green to match the skin the fuji alt would be the pink recolor inspired by the fuji skin adjusted to match the pink tones with the fox spirit matched to the color as well i'm not going to say it again now because it's a bit obvious with the purple of leisure skin being an original recolor for the athleisure skin with a purple palette. The Taki alt would be inspired by the Taki skin from Overwatch 2. And the orange athleisure skin would be an original recolor of the athleisure skin with an orange twist. And for the Kirby hat, upon inhaling Kiriko, Kirby obtains her hairstyle and signature fox hat. He also gains access to the kunai and healing Afuda moves and using them in his own unique way within Smash Bros. Kirby channels Kiriko's spirit as he dashes around, flinging kunai and providing healing 
support with the Afuda. For the classic mode, we have Spirit of Kanazaka. Round one would be Japanese folklore set in the stage Kanazaka, which is the stage that comes with Kiriko fighting against Diva and Mecha. The second round would be Lo Fi Grooves set on the battlefield stage against Tracer. Stealthy Shadows would be Moray Towers fighting against a team of Greninja. Round 4 would be Supernatural Spirits set in the stage Suzaku Castle fighting against a team of Mewtwo and Lucario. Round 5 would be called Overwatch Showdown set in the stage of King's Row fighting against Reaper, Diva and Mecha and Tracer. And the final round would be called Omnix Unleashed and would be a Gallium battle but similar to the PvE Overwatch Archives event where you fight against Gallium with a team of four representing teammates in PvE Overwatch where you face off against the powerful Gallium reminiscent of the Omnix from Overwatch's PvE modes with your team of allies. For the Echo Fighter, bringing back a classic feature from older and UFOs appeared episodes, we're bringing back Echo Fighters for select foes. In Kiddico's unique case, I did initially think about including Genji as one of her five support companions. But since Genji is too similar to Kiriko in terms of moves, and I did initially think about including Genji as his own A New Foes Appeared episode, but unfortunately, Genji's deconfirmed now with the Echo Fighter inclusion. However, recognizing the similarities between their movesets posed a challenge. The concept of Genji being an Echo Fighter did intrigue me, as Genji does predate Kiriko. I thought a harmonious blend as Kiriko's selection for a new foes appeared does come. Like, the reason I chose Kiriko was because of her lore. I did want to do Genji as well, but unfortunately, Genji and Kiriko were too similar to each other that there wasn't room for Genji. So I thought, so Genji isn't completely scrapped. I thought I would reuse him as an Echo Fighter. And choosing between two Japanese representatives from Overwatch... I mainly decided against it due to their shared design elements. And trying to make Genji's moveset identical to Kiriko's, such as the Fumindal attacks, the wall climb, while ditching the healing abilities completely, ultimately, this Echo Fighter exploration does add a bit of diversity while maintaining familiarity. It creates an, ex an exciting dynamic where Genji and Kiriko intertwine, leaning up to an awe-inspiring final smash, a team-up between Genji and Hanzo, underscoring an intricate strategy and passion behind their bond. But Genji despite being introduced first, would serve as an Echo Fighter for Kiriko, bringing his unique abilities and playstyle to the Smash Brothers arena. So the changes would be the neutral special being Shuriken as Genji replaces Kunai slash Healing Afuda with Shuriken 
as he throws shurikens at varying angles to deal damage to opponents. The side special would be Dragon Blade, as Kitsune Rush would be replaced with Dragon Blade, as he wields his iconic katana, and his Dragon Gauge determines how long he can use it, similar to Kiriko's Spirit Gauge. The up special would be Swift Step, or Modified, as Genji's up special would be a modified version of Swift Step, allowing him to perform a swift and agile maneuver to recover or evade attacks. The down special would be Deflect, as De Deflect replaces Protection Suzu, as he can deflect projectiles and even melee attacks, turning them back against his opponents. And his final smash would be the Shimada Brothers Unity, as Genji and Hanzo work together in a dynamic final smash, as Hanzo does appear as a support fighter as well, aiding both Kiriko and Genji during their final smash. Their coordinated attack showcases the unity of the Shimada Brothers. For the amiibo, Kiriko's amiibo, would showcase her in a dynamic drill kick pose, wielding her healing of Fuda in one hand and a kunai in the other. The amiibo features her loyal Kitsune companion, an intricate arch reminiscent of her ultimate Kitsune Rosh, and a captivating blue aura. And what sets this amiibo apart is, like I've done, with Silver the Hedgehog and Blaze the Cat. I'm adding a hybrid glow in the dark and light reactive element. Meaning Kiriko's glow in the dark and lights up when near an NFC reader. Additionally, a second variant of the amiibo would showcase Kiriko in her athleisure skin accompanied by a red kitsune arch and aura and the compatible games would be super smash brothers as where you tap in kiriko's amiibo to summon a trainable fighter where you can train an ai fighter customize her moveset and level her up as the amiibo retains the fighting style and tactics of the player creating a unique AI controlled ally in battles. And the functionality for this amiibo would be a bit limited since it would be primarily designed for Smash Brothers. For the stage, I went with Kanazaka from Overwatch. What influenced my decision to pick Kanazaka? was driven by the series of considerations. Initially, I explored various Overwatch 2 maps to find one that's suitable for Kiriko, only to find that none aligned well with her character. Consequently, I delved into Kiriko's background, noting her Japanese nationality, and this led me to narrow down the options for three potential stages. Hanamura, Kanazaka, and Kyoto Temple. Regret regrettably, Kyoto Temple did not make it into the final game, eliminating it as a contender. And drawing from my experience covering three previous Overwatch characters, being Diva and Mecha, Tracer and Reaper, I realized that the selection could be guided by the game modes associated with those characters. For instance, I had featured Diva and Mecha in a new foes appear 10, choosing Busan, South Korea, a control map. Tracer, who I covered in a new foes appear 49, was paired with King's Row, a hybrid map, and Reaper which I did include in A New Foes Appeared 57, 
associated with the Halloween variant of Hollywood was another hybrid map. And given that Kiriko is the fourth Overwatch representative in a new foes appeared with four others to come. I found it necessary to move away from hybrid and control maps as stage options and this led me to explore Deathmatch which is an uncharted territory from my previous selections. Ultimately, I settled on Kanazaka as the ideal stage and this choice was informed not only by its alignment with Kiriko's residence within the Overwatch lore, but also by its inclusion in Kiriko's trailer, further solidifying its relevance. So what would the stage actually be like? So Kanazaka, as a stage, would capture the essence of Kiriko's heritage and the vibrant dichotomy between tradition and modernity. The stage seamlessly blends the serene charm of the weathered wooden buildings in a Shinto shrine adorned with guardian stone foxes, with bustling energy of a competitory high rise city landscape. The contrast between these elements creates a visually captivating backdrop that mirrors the unique character of Kanazaka. As the battle unfolds, the stage would dynamically shift between areas of Kanazaka. Players may find themselves dueling atop rustic rooftops of traditional structures or trading blows amidst the lively urban streets bustling with tourists. The stage would pay homage to the town's rich cultural heritage by periodically transforming to celebrate the vibrant end of summer festival and the Fox Festival. These transitions introduce interactive elements such as festival floats and decorations that players can tactically employ to their advantage or maneuver around. The atmosphere of Kanazaka is further enriched by a melodic blend of traditional Japanese tunes and modern beats. This auditory fusion not only immerses players in the stage's environment, but also enhances the overall gaming experience. Kanazaka is more than just a backdrop. It encapsulates Kiriko's connection to her homeland and serves as a visual representation of her journey. And this stage invites the players to engage in battles while also embracing the cultural tapestry that shapes Kiriko's persona. For the support fighters, the support fighters to come with Kiriko would breathe a fresh life into the concept. These formidable allies would primarily hail from the universe of Overwatch and Overwatch 2, bringing their distinctive abilities to the fray. Interestingly, the roster also includes Hanzo, who shares Japanese heritage with Kiriko. However, I did use Genji as an Echo Fighter for Kiriko, and given their symbiotic relationship, Genji's presence was subsumed with Kiriko's moveset, emphasizing her multi-faced combat style. And notably, since I wrote this video in August, neither Awari or Malga are featured. But I will be featuring Alari and Malga in future and new foes appeared videos. So, for the support fighters themselves, we have Hanzo. Hanzo brings a versatile archery skills to the support role, revealing 
enemies with his arrows or rapidly firing to hit multiple targets. He can scale walls for adventurous positions and summon a titanic spirit dragon for devastating attacks. Sojourn, the former Overwatch captain, is all about planning leading and executing strikes and her mid-range abilities offer a unique gameplay experience boasting incredible mobility and artillery to dominate the battlefield junker queen would thrive in close combat applying wounds that gradually drains enemies health as this lifesteal mechanic enhances her aggression and survivability making her a berserker tank who becomes more formidable the more enemies she wounds. Ramatra with dual forms, Ramatra is versatile in combat. In his Omnic form, he uses a staff to protect teammates, while his Nemesis form transforms him into a menacing threat that charges down on the enemy team. And Life Weaver would use bio light technology to merge plant matter and hard light for healing purposes. He deploys a healing tree that instantly restores health to the to summoning player and continues periodic healing over time. And Life Weaver's Thorn Volley move not only damages foes, but also contributes to his supportive capabilities. So the music will end up being Kiriko Origin, Kiriko, the theme from the short film, A New Era, Zero Hour, Repress On, Antarctic Peninsula, Answering the Call, Coliseo, Life Weaver Origin, Shambali Monastery, Junker Queen Origin, Lover Watch, Sojourn Origin. I don't think I can nail the pronunciation of this, but Esperantia and Paraiso. The spirits would be the fighter spirits being Kiriko, Kiriko's athleisure skin, and Genji. The spirit board would consist of Hanzo, who's an ace spirit, Sojourn, who's also an ace spirit, Junker Queen, who's an ace spirit, Ramatra, who's a legend spirit, and Life Weaver and Alari, who are both advanced spirits. And finally, to end off the episode, we have the reveal trailer. The trailer opens up with a, a picturesque view of Kanazaka, Japan, capturing the serene fusion of tradition and modernity. As the camera pans, a swift silhouette emerges from the shadows, revealing none other than Greninja. The water ninja dashes across the scene, showing its agility, only to be confronted by a barrage of projectiles from Diva and Mecha, Tracer, and Reaper. The battle ensues, each iconic character demonstrating their skills in a frantic melee. Suddenly, a new challenger emerges onto the scene, Kiriko. The Konoichi healer from Overwatch 2. The tempo music shifts as Kiriko gracefully navigates through the chaos, evading attacks with her swift movements. The screen transitions to showcase kanji symbols as shown in the Kiriko trailer from Overwatch, gradually shifting from red to blue, all while revealing the words, Kiriko lets the Herkasuni guide her. 
gameplay footage highlights Kiriko's abilities in the Smash Arena from her kunai and healing Afuda to the protective charm and protection Suzu. The action seamlessly switches to Kiriko's echo fighter Genji as he joins the battle with his trademark swift and calculated sword strikes and the screen transitions again revealing the word Genji wields the dragon. The trailer then reaches its crescendo as the screen fades to white, then transitions to the familiar Super Smash Bros. emblem and a sudden blackout, then the screen bursts to life with red text that gracefully transforms to blue, forming the unmistakable X. The logo of Overwatch 2 materializes, completing the scene with the words Super Smash Bros. times Overwatch 2. So guys, what did you think of the first ever New Foes Appeared episode of 2024? And I can confirm for now that the red envelope showcased at the end of a New Foes Appeared 90 was Kiriko. The other three, I can't say who they are yet, but the blue one has been replaced with someone else last minute. I'm not going to say who it is, and I'm not going to confirm which foe has been replaced with someone else until that actual episode airs. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video. And I will see you all in a future New Foes Appeared episode. And happy birthday to me. BB-8 out.